you snuggle into your sleeping bag, the embers of the campfire glowing through the nylon walls of your tent. Why didn't you do this sooner, you think to yourself. Camping is peaceful. But then you notice the silhouette just outside, and the claw tearing a slow, careful rip through your tent. Your worst nightmare. The following stories are allegedly true eyewitness accounts of real-life monsters seen while camping. Enjoy these stories and pray that your next camping excursion doesn't end up like one of these stories. Subscribe and click the notification bell for more scary stories like these. And for a chance to have your story narrated on the show, share it with us at darknessprevails.org slash submit. It circled my tent all night. From James is Cole. Location, unknown. It was the early 1980s and my dad and uncle both bought a summer home in the countryside, which had some beautiful, dense woods behind it. We would often go there over the summer and enjoy the serenity of nature away from the city. At that time, my cousin and I would hang out a lot together, and we spent many hours hiking deep into those woods behind the house. And being independent kids, we decided to take my dad's camping equipment and set up an overnight campsite about 100 feet away from the house. We did this every day, and it became the thing we did every summer. Our parents were always nearby in the house, and always kept their windows open where they could easily see and hear us. They were totally okay with us being alone in the woods at night, and sometimes even pushed us to spend more time out there, even when we didn't feel like it. It became our favorite getaway from the city, and each summer, we really looked forward to going. It was one particular summer. We weren't going to go because my uncle had to go out of state, but I had been waiting all year to go, and I was devastated after hearing that we wouldn't be going after all. It meant that I'd have to go to day camp with all those annoying kids from school, and they didn't treat me too kindly. Being a five-hour drive north, my parents weren't going to make such a trip without my uncle and his family, so the answer was no and no. I never was a nagging child and often tried to help out when I could, but that summer, oh, you bet I acted up. I made the summer pretty difficult whenever I could and always mentioned to them how they could make it better for me. I didn't want to wait another whole year and I tried my best to convince them with whatever tactic I thought would work. To my surprise, my constant nagging seemed to have worked on them, because one day, they finally gave in. I later realized that it was probably because a family friend decided to come along with us and make the trip worth our while. Anyway, we traveled together for five straight hours and finally reached our destination, I could smell that pine wood scent again, and I got ready to build my campsite. It took a little longer than usual because I was alone, but I got it all set up nice and dandy. I'd gone camping enough times before with my cousin, and I felt more than confident to be alone in the dark. Although, I did decide to set up my tent a bit closer to the house, just in case. The sun began to set, and I glanced at my watch. It was 8.35 p.m. There was this unusual quietness that made me a bit anxious, but I was usually chatting with my cousin and just thought I never noticed it, not until now. Part of our camping experience was reading science fiction novels until we got tired and fell asleep, and for that night, I brought an exciting new book I'd wanted to read for some time, flashlight in one hand and book in the other, I began to read. This flashlight was one of those heavy metal ones that often flickered out. I'd have to hit it a couple of times and that would usually do the trick. It must have been around 4 a.m. when I was suddenly awakened by the sound of something brushing against my tent. 
At first, I wasn't sure if I had just imagined it or not, or if it was some rabbit that had passed by, but I quietly sat up for a moment and listened to my surroundings. There were no sounds and nothing special to hear, so I assumed it was just a small animal, and I tried to fall back to sleep. A few minutes passed by, and I was about to doze off, when something about 40 feet away from me made this freakishly angry feline growl that turned into what sounded like a woman with an old, hoarse voice. A cold shiver suddenly ran down my spine, and my thoughts began to race through my head as I imagined what it could be. It sounded human, but it also sounded like an animal. I thought of yelling for my mom and dad, but I was way too scared to even make a sound. I reached for my flashlight, and I turned it on, but instantly I realized the mistake I had made as the growl suddenly became quiet. I quickly shut off the light, and I hid under my sleeping bag, hoping that it did not hear me or that it had not seen my light. To my horror... It slowly approached and stopped right outside my tent. For a while, it just stood there, breathing loudly, and each breath sounded raspy and was full of moist pops and clicks, like its throat was filled with far too much saliva. I thought maybe it would go away if I just waited, but several more minutes passed and the thing did not move. I could hear its head moving back and forth like it was trying to find me or sense where I was, but I didn't dare let out a breath or move a muscle. Every so often, it would scratch the wall of the tent like it was testing the walls, thinking about coming inside, but I prayed and prayed that it didn't. I waited every single minute feeling like an entire hour. It kept circling me, walking and rubbing itself against the tent all night, trying to find a way to get into me, but it luckily never did. It wasn't until dawn broke, when the sun started to come up, that I finally heard it scurry away, and I no longer heard it. When my parents found me, they said that I was white like snow when they couldn't move. I was in such a state of shock that they rushed me to the hospital right away, and I stayed there for a couple of days. I only recovered a few months later, but I still get chills every time I share this story with people. I never went camping for many years after that, but I eventually did start camping again with a few buddies of mine over the years. I never did go back in the woods alone. My dad eventually sold the house to some couple who lives there to this very day, and I never experienced anything like it since. What it could have been, I can't tell you. Maybe it was just some crazy old woman, or maybe... It really was a monster. It watched me from the dark. From Bananaconda. Location unknown. I was 18 years old, camping with a couple of my friends. It was snowy, and biting cold winds battered our flimsy tents. We all sat outside on log benches, surrounding a campfire. The fire snapped and popped as the sun dipped below the black trees, and when the light was gone, we all fell silent, staring at the fire. For about 30 minutes, we sat there in silence until the friend next to me sat up and declared that he was going off to bed. After that, the rest of us decided that there would be no more talk or stories that night, and we also slowly receded into our tents. Later on, we were all awakened by a loud and piercing scream. I stepped outside the tent to investigate, and was shortly joined by the others. 
The younger friends began discussing what may have made that sound and were quickly hushed by the others. One of my friends went to grab a flashlight. He brought it out and pointed it into the forest but did not turn it on. Instead, he shivered a bit, then handed it to me. You turned it on, he said. I took it from him and flicked it on. The beam shone through the trees, and a pair of eyes shone back. Everyone gasped. The eyes were about 30 yards in front of us, larger than a man's, and solid white. They reflected the flashlight beam perfectly well. They seemed to swell with excitement. I couldn't see any other part of the creature. We all stood there watching it, and it watched us. This continued for a while, us staring at it as it blinked only occasionally, as if to show us that yes, this was in fact some creature watching us. After about an hour, I was as tired as I was scared. I set up the flashlight, pointing at the eyes still, then went back into my tent with the flap still open so that I could watch the eyes. I didn't plan to sleep, though I was soon out cold. I woke up some time after. It was still dark. I peered outside the tent flap and I saw that the eyes were gone. I closed the flap, shivered with relief, and I went to sleep. The next morning, we woke up to find footprints in the snow that we didn't recognize. They circled our tents a number of times. This unnerved me to my core. I asked them if they had been up walking around that night, and they all said no. We left quickly after that, and never figured out what we saw. A Near Encounter with the Wendigo from Leprechaun. Location Unknown. This took place on a camping trip on September 7th of 2018. I wasn't originally planning on going camping. I just wanted to kick back for the day. But two of my close friends, Jack and Chase, came over with camping gear because they said that day looked quite nice to be out. I was slightly against it at first, as I had an eerie encounter a few years back, but they pressed me on it, and I soon gave in. It took me a while to get ready, but soon we were on our way to the nearby woods. By the time we got to the spot we were going to, it was basically night, so we rushed to set up the tents and start a fire before it got extremely dark. Eventually, we managed to get a decent fire going, and for most of the night, things were going as per usual. It was quiet and chill. That is, until the sun was completely gone from the horizon. When it was pitch black, the rain came down hard, and we were forced to retreat into our tents. Chase and I shared a smaller tent, while Jack got his own larger one. The three of us were discussing how we could pass the time. We weren't tired yet, and by 3am we were still up. And that's around the time things went even further south. We heard Jack from the other tent suddenly hush us. When it went quiet, we heard footsteps around us, and we all went silent after that. Chase looked as worried as I did, and me being skeptical about these things, I was thinking of all the possible things it could be. Some trespasser on our campsite, a hiker that stumbled upon our camp, some kid playing a prank. I then decided to quietly look outside, so I pulled the tent zipper to the side, and slowly and cautiously, I peeped out. But as soon as I did, my heart froze. Standing in the middle of our campsite was a white figure. They weren't wearing any clothes, and they were thin and frail. 
They appeared to be looking around our campsite rather curiously. Chase must have been watching my face and saw the horrid look on it because he began to freak out. I looked over and silently placed a finger over my lips to quiet him. We stayed there, silent for about an hour, before we decided to slowly creep out to look around. The only form of protection we had at the time was a karambit my friend brought and my Leatherman. It really wasn't much, and I was hoping we didn't need to use them. When we stepped out into the campsite, we saw nothing. We walked around but never saw the thing that I'd seen through the flap. We crowded around the fire and restarted it. I was worried, but eventually I calmed down. After staying up for a little while, a sense of safety returned to us, and we felt ready to crawl back into our tents for some rest. But just as Jack was crawling into his tent flap, Chase grabbed me from behind by my shoulder, and he pointed into the woods. I followed his finger, and when my eyes adjusted, my mouth hung open. It was standing now, right in the woods, back facing us. It was so motionless. I felt frozen in place, not wanting to alarm it, but when we heard the sound coming from it, we almost screamed. Please help me. The words came out in a slow, forced manner. The creature itself was tall and lanky, and its limbs were long, almost exaggerated. As we stared at it, it suddenly fell to all fours and ran, disappearing into the woods. Its movement was more like an insect than a person. As soon as we had the courage to move again, we all hid in the same tent, scared and wide awake. None of the three of us spoke a word until sunrise. When it was light out, we packed up as quickly as possible and got out of Dodge. But the whole trip home, I felt like we were being watched, followed. The expression on the other guys' faces, I'll never forget it. I've never seen them so afraid. It's no wonder they refused to speak of it after we made it back home. I don't think any of us will forget this experience. It's Sinister, from William C. Location, an area called East Fork in an unspecified state. In my life, I've had two experiences that solidify my belief in creatures that are beyond our understanding. I'll share one of these experiences with you. It was my first encounter. I was 17. I was going on a horseback riding trip with my father and his friends. We were riding the trails of a hilly area called East Fork. Thick woods and tall cliffs made for beautiful scenery during the ride, broken only by the occasional camp area or stable for riders to rest their horses for the night. We spent all day riding, starting around 10 that morning, on until around 7 that evening. We met other riders and even had lunch with one group whose path we crossed on several occasions throughout the trails. During the ride, my dad and I got into an argument about me being on my phone while we rode. Afterwards, he would complain about it to his friends frequently during the rest of the ride. After we finally stopped to make camp, I confronted him about keeping on about it all day. After heated words were thrown by each of us, I finally yelled at him about being stubborn and I stomped off through the woods. I wandered around for about 30 minutes, cooling off, when I ran across another campsite. This happened to be the group we had shared lunch with that afternoon. The group had been a family of six, one woman, two men, and one teenage girl and two younger kids, a boy and a girl. One of the men, named Tom, greeted me cheerfully when he saw me and asked where the rest of my troop was. 
I told him I was just taking a walk to get some time away from my dad. He chuckled, then asked if I wanted to join them for dinner, saying he would walk me back to my father's camp afterwards. Smelling the food, my stomach rumbled, sealing our agreement. I sat down around the fire they had, and I was introduced to his family, whom I had only met briefly earlier that day. The other man was Tom's brother Keith, the woman, Tom's wife Kathleen, and their three kids, Jordan, Molly, and Brian, the latter two being twins. After the names were all said and remembered, I chatted with Jordan and Tom while Kathleen set out plates on the card table that they were using for dinner preparations. Keith called over saying dinner was ready, and we all ate, laughed, and talked for a while. As we were finishing up, Keith excused himself to use the restroom behind the camper that they had set up next to their campsite. Jordan and I continued to chat, while Tom strummed on an old guitar that he had pulled out once we had finished eating. Kathleen had gone to tuck the twins into bed inside the camper. Around then, Tom offered to walk me back to my camp. It was getting late, so I agreed, and we both stood. Suddenly, Jordan froze in between us. We looked at her as she turned pale, and a look of silent terror crossed her face as she stared behind us towards the end of the camper. Tom and I both turned and looked to see a tall, lean, and nightmarish creature. It was at least nine feet tall, not including the antlers on its head. Its body was extremely muscular and lanky at the same time. Its head was barely similar to a deer's skull, with only bits of skin still hanging in places. Its arms were clawed, one of which was holding on to a fresh bit of meat. Tom audibly cursed, and Jordan screamed. I was frozen with fear, staring at something that did not make sense to me, something that just shouldn't exist. Hearing the commotion, hearing the commotion, Kathleen came out of the camper, a Remington in her hands. One look at the thing in front of her family, her eyes grew wide and her mouth slunk open. She fired, though I am not sure she was even trying to though she hit it. The creature screamed and then ran off into the woods, pounding the soil underneath it, all the while releasing this hellish shriek. It was the worst sound I'd ever heard. After it ran off, Tom ordered everyone into the camper and started calling out for his brother, but Keith did not answer. He grabbed a flashlight and handed me one, asking me, no, begging me to help him look, but to stay close to the camper. We didn't have to look very far. We found what remained of Keith about ten feet into the woods behind the camper, his pants still undone from relieving himself. There were bites taken out of his face and stomach, and his arm was gone, which I later realized was what the creature had been holding in its claw. Kathleen had called the park rangers while we had gone out to look, and maybe 20 minutes later they showed up with two police officers. We were all thoroughly questioned and the remains were looked at. After the cops finished talking to me, they called my dad and informed him of where I was and why they had been calling. While they spoke to him on the phone, I heard him say that I had been witness to a bear attack. I was stunned. That wasn't a bear. I never even spoke of a bear in my statement. Did they even look at the remains? In no way whatsoever did this attack resemble a bear. After a while, my dad came and picked me up, asking me if I was okay. I nodded then bid goodbye to the traumatized family who had been so kind to me earlier, yet now looked lost and confused. 
a feeling that I understood completely. Strange Creature in the Woods From Fedapon Location Texas and Oklahoma I've been hunting all my life, and I've never been afraid of the woods. And I've never believed in Bigfoot, shapeshifters, or goat men, or anything like that. But in May 2012, I went snake hunting, camping, in eastern Texas and Oklahoma. I had been warned that bears were causing trouble at campsites, and that I should stay at only marked campsites. But I'm not one to do as I'm told, for better or for worse. So I took my German Shepherd and Odd Six. After a hard day of hunting for dens, I was tired and wanted to go to sleep. It was 4.45 a.m. when my dog started barking, waking me up and wanting to be out of the tent. No matter how many times I told him to be quiet, he wouldn't let it go. Finally, I grew tired of his barking and let him out. He took off to the edge of the clearing and stopped. I then knew by the way he was acting that he was after something. I grabbed my odd six and went toward the dog. I hadn't gotten more than 25 yards when the dog crawled out of the woods. He was limping bad, and only a few seconds later, I saw something coming after it, a large black creature standing on hind feet. I yelled for whoever it was that I was armed and that they'd better show themselves. Receiving no answer, I fired with a warning, but the thing didn't budge. I backed up and I looked toward my dog. He needed to get to a vet fast. He was hurt pretty bad. I picked him up and I ran toward my truck. I managed to make it inside and I went back to town. I called the local sheriff as well but he told me to call the game warden right away. I said that I was going to the vet, and I was told that he would meet me there. The vet said that they would need to keep the dog for about a week, and when the game warden arrived, he began asking about the creature that I saw. We ended up taking his truck back to the campsite, which was now all torn to shreds, and the ice chest had been turned over and emptied. The poles from the tent had been tossed in a nearby tree, I showed him the spot in the woods where I saw it. There we found a very obvious trail of fluids and fur. We followed it for a mile or two, which again was strangely easy. The creature didn't even attempt to hide its path. But suddenly the trail just stopped, as if the creature disappeared. I was confused, but the warden was terrified. He said that we needed now and that he had the feeling that if we went any further, we'd be walking into a trap. I decided to listen to his rather ominous advice. We went back to his truck and drove back to town. I don't really know what the thing was that I saw. I've been back to that area twice, and now my dog is too afraid to go out of the tent. Those words spoken by the warden haunt me to this day. Because what sort of animal is out there setting up traps for people? One that scared even the game warden when both of us were armed. Out there in the woods, nature is quick to remind us that that is not our domain. And out in the forests of this world, the creatures that lurk above, below, and around us rule. Those that make the least noise Feast on those who are far from quiet. So yeah, enjoy camping this weekend. Have a good time. But let this be a warning. There's always something watching you. Whether or not it attacks is based almost entirely on how hungry it is. Good night. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to hear your story in a future episode, Share it with us at darknessprevails.org slash submit. If you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash darknessprevails, or you can check out our merchandise at teespring.com slash stores slash darknessprevails, or it's as easy as clicking the shop button below if you're watching on YouTube. Now then, 
Here are my five favorite early comments from the previous episode about six scary hospital and nursing home stories. Jen Hansen says, listening whilst in the hospital. Thanks, darkness. Won't be able to sleep now. Well, you better. You probably need all the rest you can get. I hope you get better soon, and thanks for listening. Storm Warning says, I worked in a nursing home for three years. Some crazy things happened. I couldn't even bring myself to work overnight. I don't blame you. Don't get me wrong, I respect the elderly. But I've met a few elderly people who just creep me out. Not to mention, a nursing home would be scary overnight. Natalie 2154P says, Creepy hospital story. Nearly being offed by necro, flesh-eating bacteria. Ugh, never again. Well, dang, that sounds horrifying. I'm glad you're still here to make that comment. X Dylan Ratzeg says, This convinces me further to not get injured. The other thing that makes me not want to get sick or injured is how expensive medical bills are. I know they say we've got the best doctors in the world in America, but it does not have to be this expensive. You've got that right. Darren Hannibal says, Hey darkness, love your channel. I live in the Caribbean, and I hope I don't get any spooky dreams tonight. Ooh, Caribbean stories. God, I gotta get better organized. I've had so many ideas that I keep forgetting about. Anyway, thanks, Darren, and I hope the dreams weren't too spooky. Well, that brings us to the end of this Darkness Prevails episode. But don't you worry, more scary stories are on the way. Until next time, here are the credits to my patrons who continue to donate. Remember, stay safe out there and stay creepy, because this world is a strange one. <laughs>